I mean, I don't know if you shared on the pod yet, but before we started recording, uh, why you started the podcast. Yeah. So I don't know if you shared I, that. I'll keep that okay. on the DL for, for now, only okay. because I feel like if this is something that actually takes off, because anything can take off nowadays in social media, that then I could tell the story after. Because now it may just seem like, wow, it's like, okay, this guy maybe is just doing this for fun, or he's just trying to try something new, doesn't really know what he's doing. Yeah. But I've, I think it's foolproof, and it's something that will be never ending, because athletes are every year, creatives are new. There are so many different people that have stories that I would like to hear. I know a lot of people will benefit from hearing them, so. I can't tell. Yeah. I don't want to tell the reason. Okay. How so, I got inspired yet? Yeah, keep it keep it under wraps, yeah. and uh, you know, it'll be a good story later in the it future. It will definitely will. Um, how did you start playing baseball, though? How did I start playing baseball? That's a good question. I, from a young age, uh, I think my dad put a baseball in my hand when I was like two or three years old. And, uh, you know, one of those little rubber baseballs and. He said I put a huge smile on my face, and um, from that time, my dad played baseball at Iona College, which is in New Rochelle, New York. He played there, and uh, like that was something that we really bonded over from a young age. And um, he said that I was like kind of progressing at it a little quicker than than younger kids. So he always had me play with the older kids. Okay. Oh yeah, you so, played up. Yeah, I always played up. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> like, I think when I was like six or seven years old, I was playing with nine U, ten U guys, and they just like, I wasn't the best player playing up, but it, it taught me like, you know, this is what I need to strive towards. This is what I need to strive towards. Uh, and it was something that I always really enjoyed being outside. Um, like just a sport that like you you learn a lot of lessons. The sport of failure, you know, I was a pitcher, uh, but I hit a lot of my career. And, and you, you know, talk about trying to get into the Hall of Fame as an MLB player, you want to hit above 300. I mean, seven out of ten times you're not getting a hit. Like, think about how much you're failing, but you're still a Hall of Famer. So, uh, it was a sport that taught me a lot of lessons, and uh, I always felt that peace when I was out there on the field. And, and it was a lot of cool relationships. That's crazy. So, like, I know from my perspective, I'm not someone that actually understands the game of baseball as far as a lot of people do that either watch it, that have played it for a really long time. I only know how tedious the pitcher position is from watching you guys play, actually. Yeah. Um, Don Ross doesn't... Great pitcher. <laughs> missing one of them. Yeah. But, like, just watching you guys in the bullpen, you know, outside of games, you guys telling me the different kind of pitches where you got to place your fingers and all that stuff. How did you like, like how was that process as a kid mm. growing up? And like, how did you deal with maybe frustration where at times it didn't work? Yeah, a lot of um, trial and error, right? Like, I think you you know we practice six days a week at Tampa. Um, maybe one day a week you're competing against each other on the field. And then the other five days you're working on your craft for yourself, not really for anyone else. And you're, I mean, throwing every different pitch that you want to have in your arsenal for that one day that you're going to compete against another guy out on the field. So uh, for me, learning pitches um, was a lot of trial and error, a lot of like uh, like throwing a bullpen right to a catcher. You're on the mound, no one's in the box, but you're trying different things. You're telling them, all right, I'm going to throw a fastball outside here. I want it to have a little bit of sink. And, you know, you, you throw it, and if you don't get it, you're like, all right, again, again. And then you get it two or three times in a row, and you're like, all right, maybe I can start throwing this to batters. Um, but a lot of trial and error. I think when I finished up my career, it was 2023, and I probably, I was throwing fastball, more of a sinker, slider, and changeup. But when I first started pitching, it was like, you know, forcing fastball, curveball, I didn't really have a changeup. So, the arsenal was always changing throughout a career. That's true. I know playing time is a huge thing for athletes as a whole. I know I, I play soccer, and <laughs> that's a whole different story. But um, for baseball, for baseball athletes that are pitching and are actually batting, I know that watching you guys again, being totally new to baseball and actually the high level part of it, how important is actually getting playing time? I know that the three different days that you guys were playing over the weekend, 
yeah. you guys might actually interchange his pictures. And being the cameraman for most of those games, I can see like, okay, certain pitchers going in because the other team has no clue how this pitcher pitches or they can't swing this way or they're bad on the left side, you know? So yeah. go into that a little bit. Yeah, Tampa was very, University of Tampa was very, um, they understood the statistics behind what pitchers are gonna succeed against what type of teams. Mm -hmm going off playing time I mean I know so many people who are very very talented athletes but just didn't get a lot of in-game experience right like they could throw 95 plus miles an hour um, and I was never the guy who could really even break 90 91 miles an hour I was always 86 87 88 but I could throw multiple pitches for strikes at any count and kind of keep guys off balance um, guys who could throw 95 plus they are way better athletes than myself uh, physically, but um, they just struggled with throwing strikes or confidence or mental. So I think like from a young age, like always like getting that playing time and, and feeling confident in game setting is way different than what I was talking about before the practices. Like that's not going to prepare you for when another guy steps in the box and you're trying to compete against him with, you know, a thousand plus people watching at the same time. So. Um, Playing time super important, of course, but practice, I mean, makes perfect. Uh, so that's it's a tough situation where, like, you could be really good in practice and then just not be able to compete out on the field. So I was blessed. I had a good career. Guy, low key. Yeah, I had low a good key. career, but um, obviously I didn't get to win a national championship like some other people that might be watching. <laughs> so uh, I, do, I do look back and wish I won a national championship. So that actually does, that sits with you. I, yeah. I was thinking about that the other day, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I was thinking about the some of the volleyball team that definitely been there for a long time that maybe have not gotten that chance. But then I thought about baseball because they just have won. Yeah, I had another year of eligibility because of COVID and I had Tommy John surgery my freshman year. What's Tommy John? So elbow reconstruction. Um, yeah, good old scar right there. Um, it's very common in pitchers nowadays. It's just the overhand throwing motion is not a very common uh, muscle movement. And uh, continuously, it, yeah, c continuously for the amount of times that we do it. Um, so I had Tommy John surgery my freshman year, COVID. I, I had two years of eligibility on top of the four year like undergrad. So I did my master's at Tampa in the fifth year, and then I had a sixth year of eligibility, but. My body was kind of like, you know, hey, <laughs> you're, you're turning 23 years old this year. Uh, I know major league guys do it until they're 35, 40, but I just didn't have the ability or drive to keep going at the time. And then I see them win a national championship and I'm like, could have had that. <laughs> maybe, but maybe if I played things, would have played yeah, out differently. So exactly. everything happens for a reason. Yeah, for a reason. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really happy for them. I, I got to live with Jack Brodsky won the national championship <laughs> so i was still you know going out with the team a little bit at night and uh able to go out to dinner with them and go to practice so i was still okay. felt somewhat a part of the team but obviously didn't get a ring or anything you still you basically helped them to get it man that ambition rolled over maybe don't yeah. don't cut yourself out maybe so i'm i'm from maryland i don't know if a lot of people know that i started talking about it a little bit more openly but i'm from the dmv and so i grew up watching <laughs> the Bowie Bay Sox, they were like a triple A, I believe. And at the time, I didn't understand the divisions. So I know I watched the Nationals, the Orioles. And so, of course, as a kid and people that really may not be too invested in the baseball, we just want to see the ball go fast. Yeah. <laughs> Does it actually matter how fast pitchers have to throw the ball for you to be considered skillful? Um, to an extent, yeah. Like... Especially if you want to continue playing at that next level, like you were talking, you know, you're making your way through the low A, double A, triple A, then the majors. There's not many guys who are going to continue to move up and make it to the majors if they're not 94 plus nowadays, 93, 94, 95 plus. So um, at the different college levels, division three, II, division two, II, division one, you weren't getting recruited out of high school if you weren't to a Division One school, 88 plus as a you know a right-handed pitcher, maybe even 90 plus. Um, but then you talk about skill, like it's very there's a lot of skill involved throwing 
multiple pitches for strikes, which some people struggle with. Um, so, I mean, to answer the question, it's a very, like, give or take situation. Like, you don't know if you can be considered skillful, skillful or not if you can throw the ball 100 miles an hour. Like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. There are guys who can Our probably take. pick up, like, there are guys um, in football, quarterbacks, okay. that might be able to pick up the ball and throw, you know, 90 plus miles an hour. But are they skillful at baseball? That's I don't think so. You know, like, I don't think that they're considered skillful because they can pick up a ball and throw it 90 miles an hour. But I I see it going either way. That could be a hot topic right there. Yeah. Hmm. I definitely Ooh. debate with a lot of people, like... Um, Is that a thing? Is that... Okay, so I know... I know that people say, and correct me if I'm wrong, that it's either basketball can play football or football can uh, play basketball. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Does that also apply with football and pitchers um quarterbacks quarterbacks and pitchers well i know like kyler murray i think played both in college um he now plays football obviously for the cardinals i think mahomes might have played both i think some quarterbacks sometimes are also drafted late rounds in baseball when it used to be a 40 round draft um Sometimes, like 38 to 39 and 40th round, they'll take a quarterback who is most likely going to go play football, but they'll they'll draft that quarterback to say, hey, like if your football career doesn't work out, we'd love to try to get you to pitch, and, and we'll try to develop you if you want. Mm-hmm. So I think that football quarterbacks to baseball pitchers are probably the most like transferable. Um, but I personally think baseball athletes are the most like skillful in other sports like they're the, not always the most athletic they're not always the most athletic but i think baseball players can competently play other sports <laughs> that might be that might be a hot topic I, I, you said it and i was like yeah clip <laughs> clip that where where did you actually grow up i grew up in Montfield, new jersey okay. uh, bergen county area so right on the border of New York State. And I grew up a Yankee fan. So I, I grew up going to Yankee games, driving into the city with my family, um, taking the train in sometimes. And uh, it's always around the sport of baseball. So I grew up in New Jersey, and then I came back in Florida for my master's degree. Uh, so you were up there already? Before you my, my first school, Iona, uh, Iona University now, was in New Rochelle, New York, 45 minutes from where I grew up. Same thing, take the train into Yankee games, take the train into Met games. Um, How far are they apart, the Mets and the Yankees? I think like 30 minute drive, depending on traffic, but not far, like maybe 10 miles. I'm not 100% okay. sure, but right there, right there. Is it, I guess people that are from Jersey, do they kind of inherit or adopt like a New York team? Yeah. Is, it, is there a baseball in Jersey? There's no like baseball team uh, like major league team in New Jersey for baseball. There is I didn't know that. Um, South Jersey guys, usually like Phillies, okay. like the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, but it, it varies. Like it's either like Phillies, New York teams, and then if you're North New, North New Jersey, sometimes you could be like a Boston fan because you're right on the border of Connecticut and uh, the New England area. So that's interesting. It's like. I have a friend in Jersey. I have a really good friend in Jersey. Probably the biggest Yankee fan that I know. Now knowing that there's not much baseball in Jersey, how did you still continue to play a sport that's not really in the state? Yeah, a lot of good talent comes out of Jersey, baseball-wise. Um, really? Yeah, yeah, like Mike Trout, baseball oh, uh, Jersey I know guy. One of the one of the players that I know. Mike <laughs> Trout from from Jersey, somewhere in there. Um, Todd Frazier is a Jersey guy. He played a lot of years in the MLB. Um, blanking on some some other names right now, but I, I know a lot of good talent who comes out of Jersey. Justin Henry Malloy is playing for the Tigers right now. I played against him growing up my whole okay. life. Um, what do you remember you? Yeah, I texted him after oh, they, they uh, finished up their uh, season. 
they lost to the Guardians to play the Yankees. I would have loved for the Yankees to play the Tigers. He would have had so many fans at the game. That's crazy. Uh, but he had a great year. This is his first year finishing up. Uh, so he just, oh, he just got. He just, just finished up his okay. first year in the majors. He played for Vanderbilt for the beginning part of his career, and then Georgia Tech he got drafted from. GT, wow. There's Wait, a lot of good athletes in, in Jersey. Does baseball. GT have good baseball? Yeah, yeah. They, they're known as like catcher university. They develop a lot of really good catchers. Uh, I'm, I'm not tuned in. I go up there for basketball, football, volleyball, and I just totally skipped over baseball. Man. Yeah, very good. You should, yeah, you should record some I baseball. I didn't even there. know. I'm, I'll definitely, I'll reach out to somebody. Yeah, whoever, whenever you're in an area that might have good baseball, make sure you reach out to me because I might have someone who played at the school or, um, for sure. you know, I'm, I know some college coaches now, so, uh, I didn't even know. think about that. Yeah, you gotta utilize your connections through athletes I'm, see, to I'm, get more <laughs> like content filming. See, that's what I do. That's what I do. And I think, you know, going all the way back on, I wasn't even into baseball until UT. Tampa. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I kind of just got thrown in. Like, at the time, I don't know if I can go too deep into it, but there's certain people that get assigned certain teams, and that's just how most departments work. Yeah. You know, most athletic departments work. So at the time. I was with softball, and then literally the day before practice started, switched. Wow. I didn't know. Like, I got there, and it was like, oh, we're just going to switch you. So I was like, all right. It's like all the softball girls now, they're like, they, <laughs> I couldn't tell them. Like, yeah. I just had to kind of not show up. They're like, okay, we're going to come to the next practice. Yeah. Like, I'm a whole like different team. team. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So just, um, you guys were fun. You guys were so much fun on the trips. We're definitely the most fun. Dominican Republic. Uh, where else did we head? I think we got Valdosta. on a plane. Yeah, Valdosta was good. We got on a plane. We went to <clears throat> Mississippi and South Carolina. I think yeah. we flew to both I went to the South. I didn't go to Mississippi. <laughs> Sometimes I wasn't available. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was fun. You're a hard, rack, hard guy to reach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I'll hope to be someday. <laughs> That's the goal. Yeah. But I know, um, so honestly, just learning baseball, through you guys, like being in the dugout, honestly, because I, I grew up playing machine pitch, right? Yeah. That's how far I got. That was it. I did. I couldn't do the actual thing. But now, actually learning the sport to you guys, how things work in the bullpen, different types of like pitching, the batting, the strategy, like all of it. Yeah. Just learning all of it, the rules, and then of course how long it takes is a very long game. So I wasn't even thinking about just like, okay, I can go to other schools for baseball. Because I'm yeah. doing that for basketball, <clears throat> volleyball, you know, all these different sports because of the athletes that I know. Yeah. Not even thinking about baseball. Yeah. How do you want to transition into the movie industry or director? Movie? That's a great question. <clears throat> so, again, won't give all the sauce away, but I knew, I knew I wanted to do movies since I was a kid. And I didn't know that the way that I watch movies was different from everyone else around me. Gotcha. And so, kind of quickly I learned that going to movies with friends, they wouldn't really want to talk about it that much when we go to like dinner after or something like that. But I'd be so invested on everything else that's on the screen. Like, okay, I understand the pace, I understand the colors, I understand the mood, the tension, the different shots, the different lenses that they're yeah. using, the camera, like all this stuff I'm so invested in. Because I knew it takes, like, it could take three months up to a year just to make a movie that comes out the year after. And then you got to market it. You got to understand, like, the themes. You know, I can go on for days. Yeah. But just um, coming to college at the time, I was making music. I was a music producer. So music production was more of, like, a therapy thing because I knew that, one, if I could just continue to be in this therapeutic state and make money off of it, I don't have to think about anything else for the rest of my life. Plus, if it helps other people, I'm with it. So doing music actually helped me to understand movies more because you still need movie scores. Yeah. So like, shoot, that could be my way in to the industry. I didn't know how to use a camera yet. So yeah. first it was music. It was like, okay, I could score movies. Then doing graphics. Okay, I could do the cover, cover art. I could do the posters. I could do the graphics, you know, I could do yeah. the credits, all that stuff. That's another way in. Now I got two. And now I come into the uh, sports department. Well, I kind of like sports. Like, yeah, I think I do. I didn't know uh, how much of a sports head you really have to be to work in the 
athletic department. Yeah. So first, um, Christian Wins was the media director at the time. And he has a lot of business and a lot of, um, I guess just like he knows people in the area, so he does a lot of freelance work. And he couldn't be there all the time. So they were like, oh, we could just teach him how to use a camera. So I was like, sure, I would love to. I'm a freshman, sophomore, I got plenty of time on my hands. I learned it so fast. I learned how to use the camera really fast, but I was really terrible at tracking things, okay. you know? So I already understood that if I learned how to track <laughs> I understood if I learned how to track sports that everything else would be easy after that. Yeah. So sports are probably the quickest moving, most unpredictable thing you could film. Yeah. Right? Like if you're filming a movie or a TV show, like there's a script that yeah, they're gonna script. follow. So you know where you everything. can anticipate where it's gonna go. Baseball you can't do that. Oh. So that's why like that's why I had my fun. I was like, if I could become so good at understanding where things are gonna go in a live action setting, yeah. everything else film-wise is gonna be easy. That makes now sense. I know the camera, I know the music, I know the graphics, I know how to create the stories, I know how to tell the story, you know what I mean? And yeah. just like all these things are coming together by the grace of God, it's just like, it's now I'm here. I definitely have plenty of different avenues and yeah. doors I could walk through now, so I'm honestly just grateful for the way that things have turned out so I know the next step is still networking I'm just trying to meet people that are either in the industry or maybe know someone who knows somebody you know or just continue to get different projects out there that are documentary based and so shooting the documentary uh, Operation 53 with Athlete Innovations we do that every single year on the combine process and that is another like learning opportunity for me because I'm doing everything with one person, you know? Yeah. I'm doing the shooting, I'm doing the music, I'm the doing everything, I'm doing it all. Yeah. I love it. It is a lot, but it's all gonna pay off. And I, I have no doubt about that at all. So that is, that's how I'm gonna transition. I'm not even transition. I'll probably be doing both. Yeah. I'll probably be making sports movies. It's just like foundational, <laughs> you're building a foundation and you're just gonna keep growing on top of the foundation. Literally that. Right. And that's the best part. Adam Sandler was one of my favorite actors growing up just because you know he kind of had his own movies so you just called him adam sandler movies yeah but i didn't understand and know that most of his friends were all in the same movies he was so that's how he wanted it yeah so hopefully one day i get the opportunity to do the same thing so you have me in your movie that's what i'm saying you have me. I, I would definitely <laughs> will dude 100 you got the picture room already filled yeah. out you know what i'm saying yeah. like, and then like that's like it feels like the ultimate dream because i will feel like the kid that always got to do what he wanted to do, but then also I'm basically just having fun with my friends. Yeah. Like I, I would absolutely love that. That's a great vision. Absolutely. Man. Great vision. Absolutely. Very cool. Um, so, grew up in Jersey. How, I yeah, wait, I, 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 I how did we get much. there? Yeah, we grew up in Jersey. <laughs> That's how we, uh, that was the first question there that led into we all that. We did Yankees and then. I don't know, but that was good. Remember. That was really good. So, he, he grew up in Jersey. My friend from Jersey says that bagels up there are so much better <laughs> than yeah. here. Yeah. It's like, you know, Einstein's on campus. Yeah. He says they're just they're trash. Yeah, they're not good. They're not good. Not good. No, big, like bagels, what? I don't know what it really is. I'm not a food head. Like, I love food. Um, one of my friends says that he doesn't eat to live, he lives to eat. Lives to eat. I'm a BB. You know what that is? Yeah. Borderline Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> you love to eat. I, 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 like, I like experiences. Yeah. And I think I'm just all about experiences. So, like, I can definitely lock in and be like, okay, for the next couple months, I just have to eat this. Perfectly fine. Because I'm yeah. just going to focus on, like, work. And that's it. But then if it's like, okay, I'm in the DR. Give me everything. I don't want to see pizza. I don't want to see burgers, no, no. you know? Yeah. I want to try everything of the yeah. experience. So I'm um, experience person. Yeah, bagels, for some reason, aren't the same down here. Pizza isn't great. Santoris is pretty good, but um, it's hard to find, like, New York City pizza around here, which you're not supposed to have it. It's different yeah, in every state. Yeah. Like, uh, you're not going to find great, you know, I find some great seafood places down here. Um, I mean, I don't know. Have you ever had Gator? Me? Yeah. Like, Gator. I think fried Gator I've had fried Gator. Gator before. bites are good down here. Would you consider Eddie and Sam's a good New York pizza spot? Not, not, not great. Like, it's probably like a six out of ten. Ooh, yeah, wow. Six and a half out of ten. Okay. That's have like, you been to New York City? 
I have once. once. Only one time, and I was 10 years old. It was out oh, nine, because it was 2010. My birthday is January 2nd. So we were just there. Yeah. Uh, I still remember all the lights. I still remember, I think, Rockefeller Plaza, Times Square. And where we were, there's so many different buildings that we were looking at the wrong one. We're thinking <laughs> that is the ball going to drop. We're all waiting for it to move. Nothing's happening. So then we got five minutes left, we're like, okay, something's wrong. No, we're on like the wrong side of the room. So you were there for New Year's? There for New Year's. Wow, that's a, that's an experience. Yeah, I don't think I've, I've done that. Um, but you should go with the camera. Oh, bring, some, like, when, bring some friends and uh, just shoot some content there. You, you see a lot of interesting people, a lot of good food, a lot of things to do. Oh, I still like to go back. I'm actually going back next week, or actually this week now. I'm leaving on Thursday. Hopefully I get to see a Yankees World Series game. If uh, I was looking at tickets before, uh, pricing is nine fifty before taxes for standing room only. What's the what's like front row? Probably like fifteen twenty grand. Goodness gracious. Yeah. Ooh, so if anyone mean? wants to sponsor uh, <laughs> me and Alex to go to that game, I'll, I'll love to come out. I'll love to come out. Shoot, I've never. Uh, I've only been to a Tampa. What are they called? Race, Tampa Bay Race. I'm blanking out, man. I just yeah. heard the other day they may be leaving. Well, their roof during Hurricane Milton blew off. Mm -hmm. And they were thinking about, I think they got approved for stadium renovations. They wanted yeah. to do a brand new stadium by like 2029 or something like that. And in order to fix the roof, it's like a seven figure project. Oh, shoot. So, like, they're just about to build this multi, maybe even, you know, million dollar stadium renovations for a new stadium and now they're being told yeah in order to fix the roof on like your current stadium it's going to be over seven figures same time they don't know what to do they're yeah. like if we put the roof on we don't want to put seven figures into a place we're not going to play it anymore that could break down again yeah that makes sense jeez so but they, there's a lot of money in sports a lot a lot could of money been. how did you cross over from baseball into what you're doing now yeah so I ran a podcast, uh, Beyond the Field, and I was with Elevate Sports Media, a company that uh, my buddy Nico started during COVID. And I was, I had an internship with LAA Sport and Entertainment, which they're a pretty big sports agency right now. They represent in football like Dalvin Cook, J.K. Dobbins, um, Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers. Yeah, but a bunch of up and coming stars. And uh, I had an internship there for couple months and you know what I learned from them is like you know in the sports industry we're learning as we're going too. like we're building this you know great sports agency but we're still learning as we're going so my buddy Nico we would always get on the phone and he was like why don't you just come join me at Elevate we can grow this how you want you know become a managing partner with me and like let's try to do this and I was like sure so I went to Elevate and I started running a podcast that was something I was really interested in my podcast it was, was cool I was listening man. yeah it was, it was connecting professional and collegiate athletes um, to a platform that they could share their story beyond the stats. It was called Beyond the Field. I wanted them to be able to share a story beyond what they're being judged on on the field. Right? Obviously, we did shoot the shit a little bit, talk about <laughs> baseball. Um, but I, I wanted to know their background, their story, where they came from, how they got to where they are today. And I did 16 weeks of that, 16 episodes, 16 different interviewees. And... Um, from there, I transitioned to wealth management, where I now work with professional athletes, entrepreneurs, business owners, and I help them build and protect their wealth, right? Like awesome. it's a very personal conversation still with these guys, just like it was talking about, you know, where they came from and, and asking them questions and really hearing what they're saying and what their goals are in their career professionally or personally. So making that transition, some of the guys I even interviewed are clients now, and um, I'm able to stay around the game, but also work with people who want to work with me. Like I want to, I, I tell people this all the time. If I call you up and you're a client of mine and you're not excited to see my name pop up on, my, on your phone, I don't know if I want to work with you. Like I don't want to be like someone that you see my name and it's like, oh, what is he calling about now? Like I want you to be excited that we're working together. So. Uh, that's the tra been the transition for me. I'm studying and working towards the CFP now. You got to get a bunch of designations <coughs> in this industry in order for people to trust you with their money. So it's their <laughs> hard-earned money. I completely understand that, but I know that I can help them 
protect it and grow it to the next level. So um, it's been good. You know, I'm a year and a half into the industry. I'm about to make a, a career change coming up soon. Uh, won't tell too much about that either. Uh, but once we start there, uh, there'll be some announcements on social media, and we'll be able to link this, and it'll be a full circle. Full circle. <laughs> that, that, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, that would work work out perfectly. How did you like? I know for me, with soccer, taking just like a lot of things that I learned positional wise, they actually helped me a lot in the long run with the certain positions I may have to deal with. So I know that I'm really good with working with people and teams and team scenarios because uh, I played center back and center mid the close you know close, close to the end of my career and that was like the highest level I played at Montverde Academy so rolling over into sports rolling over into uh, departments um, and definitely putting together certain projects it helped me a lot just to understand like okay I have to understand their strengths and figure out how to pull it out for this project so everything works together and it's like yeah it kind of it's now like blissful in a sense how did that work out with pitching and baseball and like rolling over to what you're doing yeah i talk about it all the time to people i didn't have much intern ex intern experience um in undergrad or even like high school right like i was always playing my goal was to play uh uh professional baseball right so like I was just so present in the fact that I wanted to be a major league athlete. Um, so I learned how to be a good teammate, learned how to understand people, learned how to um, really work hard at like something that I knew I wanted, right? And ultimately fell a little short of being an MLB player, but uh, it's not always going to work out like that. So uh, everything happens for a reason. I'm a firm believer in that. So uh, when I talk to people about work, uh, it's very easy for me to talk about my experiences with baseball. So that's that's been cool for me. Uh, we got a guy rolling up here. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on around yeah, us right now. We we're, some, uh, we're in a park birds. in Hyde Park right now. <laughs> uh, we wanted the, ba the baseball background. I'm taking a picture of this. <laughs> oh, I'm going to attack you. <laughs> yeah, but that's like the leader bird right there. You see I it? Think. Yeah. <laughs> the leader bird. My bad. That's that's all right. Right. I yeah. thought they were going to migrate like exactly in front of us. They're, this is our crowd for today. Oh. You know, we're used to playing in front of uh, and filming in front of a bunch of people. That's now we're true. filming in front of a bunch of birds. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, playing baseball, of course. And, oh my gosh, we got another one. Um, if we get attacked, which one are you jumping first? I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure here. We don't got any food. <laughs> okay. So, growing up playing baseball, were there specific players that you looked up to and maybe grabbed the little aneurysms that they had? Maybe yeah. you saw them, uh, either it could even be a tire. Like, what is, what is the actual baseball drip you know i got used to seeing jv uh ej nunez of course with the black marker and all that stuff like, yeah what if you see a certain baseball player would you be a little intimidated of their game knowing like they're wearing something specific for me i was never a flashy guy i always wanted to like look clean but i never really uh cared too much for all the extra arm sleeves bracelets necklaces like I think it's very common for uh, baseball players to be wearing uh, chains. I think that's something like if you ask anyone, they're like, oh yeah, baseball players always wear necklaces. Um, but for me, like looking up to more of someone's character, like Derek Jeter, for example, the star shortstop in New York City. I, I forget when he started. I think he was like 21, 22 years old, maybe even younger, right? By the time he was up in the league. and to be able to handle yourself at that age and never have like any off the field uh, like flips where like, you know, he's getting into the wrong things. Like I'm sure he was presented with hundreds of opportunities that just like would be able to deter his career. So I, I really looked up to him for being the shortstop in a, a ginormous market and, and really being able to handle himself the right way. So that's like character. I was really looking up to people like that way. That's good. I'm like, I know, uh, you know Zay? 
Yeah, I saw him the other night. I had a really? team, uh, uh, University of Tampa played Team Italy. Oh, I went to that. So uh, he met Aaron Judge because he uh, he works for the Tampa Tarpons. Um, so whenever like New York comes over, of course, is that that's a like, cool opportunity to get to report for them and uh, work with them a little bit. But when he met Aaron Judge, took the picture. Aaron Judge like a foot and a half taller than him. Yeah, like, he's like six six. I didn't know how like big these baseball players really are. And I know earlier you talked about it, you don't really have to look or be the most athletic to play baseball. Or what are like certain stigmatisms? Um, I guess at a, at a younger age that many baseball players may have to deal with on like the mental side of things. <laughs> are they seeing them in the back? Yeah, they, <laughs> they should be able to. I hope so. Um, so I think like you're talking about stigmatisms that make someone a good player. Like, um, or maybe just like certain things that baseball players have to face that people may not know about. Injuries, I think, are always something for people that you might have to face, that you're gonna have to overcome. You know, dude, don't let your career slip by the wayside because you have an injury, right? Like I went through a bunch of injuries that led me to University of Tampa where I didn't have one for my whole last last season, right? So um, it ended up working out really well, uh, but I did have to work through a lot of injuries. Tommy John surgery, hamstring injury, back injuries. Uh, so in anything, any sport, not just baseball, mm -hmm. like, you know, work hard at staying healthy, good sleep. <laughs> We're getting attacked by birds over here. Um, uh, there's, I mean, sports teach a lot of lessons. We were talking a little bit about before, and that's to me, like, <clears throat> the biggest reason why I loved that I was involved in sports. I'm going to hopefully have a family one day, and I, I hope my kids want to take a liking towards sports because it's going to teach them a lot about like life mm -hmm. just life in general like it's not always going to be going well but when it's going well enjoy the moment and uh you know be able to celebrate the times that bring a lot of good people together mm -hmm. so i know a big maybe not like as indirect i know a lesson that i took from soccer is communication is key yeah and i know like of course everyone would definitely say that about you know romantic relationships or business whatever but just like knowing that you're on the field and a simple telling your teammate man on like you got you know got someone's behind you or someone is um, coming to take the ball away <laughs> but communication is key if you're in the midfield or you're in the defense you're a goalkeeper you need to talk and rolling over to business you know just career in general I've watched so many projects departments teams even athletic teams just fall apart yeah. because either they're not communicating well, they're not being truthful, you know, gossip, like whatever, whatever. Yeah. So like, I just know communication was the number one thing. Communication and comprehension. What was something that baseball has maybe taught you? Yeah, baseball taught, I mean, you share a locker room with 30 other guys and everyone's working towards winning a championship, but you know, one guy might not be playing as much as the starting shortstop or the Friday night pitcher like there are egos in a locker room and they're good and bad people are going to mesh together people are going to you know kind of pull apart a little bit but at the end of the day like you need to be able to communicate how you're feeling and uh, keeping them kind of bundled up and letting it all explode at one point is like where what you're talking about it might kind of all fall by the wayside um, so communication, I mean, my master's was in professional communication. I loved that. Like, we got to get up and do a lot of public speaking, a lot of learning about communication styles. Um, I did my, my podcast and, and social media marketing. That's huge. It's just huge in today's day and age. So you bringing around a camera and, uh, you know, getting to tell stories is, like, at the end of the day, what's always going to be around, right? It's going to create memories that people are going to remember. And it's, it's really cool what you're doing, so keep doing it. Keep I'll, give it a, I'll give another, uh, it's like a small bit of how this started. Myron Golden. Myron Golden is someone else that is in Tampa. Um, I don't know too, too much about his background. I just know that one day I saw him on YouTube through a friend of mine who actually is one of my bosses at Athlete Medicine. But just the amount of wisdom that he spoke with and like, man, he, he's someone, I don't know his full problem, but something like he can't walk. But the fact that he can't walk 
here is perfectly fine. And everything that he says is very beneficial. Everything that he says has purpose. Yeah. And yeah, I, I someone go going off there. that, going yeah, off yeah. that. Sean Callagy okay. was one of my baseball coaches growing up. He coached the FAA, it was called the Fa Phoenix. It was my, it was my club team. But he was also a wildly successful lawyer. He closed some of the biggest, won some of the biggest cases um, in the state of Arizona. And he, he had his practice in New Jersey, and he wanted to start a club team for his son and, and us to have a platform to one, become better men, but two, go out there and learn the game of baseball. He has a company now called Unblinded because he is a fully blind man who has built and sold two different law firms in his life. Multi-million dollar man, still surfs. I hiked Camelback Mountain with him in Arizona. He is fully blind. He had his sight and he has, I forget what the uh, di diagnosis is, but over time he slowly lost his vision. And legally blind man, he has built multiple different companies up and sold them and uh, still, like I was saying, surfs, skis, swims with sharks. And he is one of the most unique people I've ever met. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about how someone yeah. didn't let their disability stop them. Yeah. That's like, you know, you can do anything you put your mind to in this world. So that's that's a cool thing about this. Yeah, man. Myron, Myron Golden, um, definitely look him up. I highly recommend him. He's someone who definitely uses the Bible to his advantage. It's something that I definitely inherit and do as well. But he's taken it to a whole different level and is very successful off of it. But it's not to be successful off the Bible. It's just using what the Bible has taught us to his advantage. And that's something that I do as well, especially yeah. with treating people how I want to be treated. I mean, you were a pretty nice guy. <laughs> but I remember the first person I met was Don Ross. And I met him. You know, kind of like walking behind the field. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I was the dugout, like way over by uh, oh, Morsani. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that little area. So I wasn't. I didn't have a camera in my head. But he just started talking to me. He didn't know that I was actually working for the school and I was going to be recording you guys soon. But out of nowhere, it just started being nice, and I was like, "This guy's kind of cool." So as we started going into his background, learning that he was a believer as well. I was like, okay, something is like, uh, like very different about him, and um, just kind of actually seeing how far that can get you, you know, putting good things out, you're bound to get it back. And I know uh, earlier, a couple weeks back, talking to Ava, we were talking about how, um, you know, Ava, Ava, Ava Fair, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She, she did some filming too, yeah. Um, she was saying how, of course, in the world that we live in today. Um, you can be nice, you can be kind, you may not get it back from certain people. It doesn't mean that you have to change. Yeah. Are there certain things that you may have faced in the game, in life, outside of baseball, in your career, that um, even business deals, business has is very meticulous in sports, that you may have just asked yourself, like, okay, I may not see what tomorrow brings, I may not see what this deal might bring, but you still have to kind of keep your character. Yeah, um, there's a few that come to mind. Um, I like, you know, I tell much the story about my dad a lot. He passed away about 10 years ago now. And Sorry, I did not know that. Yeah, he passed away about 10 years ago, and I was, you know, a 14-year-old kid. I had my mom and my younger sister. I become the only man in the house, and you got to grow up really quick, you know, and. Um, I think that's what kind of taught me to mature a little quicker and treat people the right way because you never know what they're going through, right? Like you never know if you make a joke about you know something that might be kind of light to you is something that really hits home to someone else. Yeah. So going back to communication, you never know what the other person's going through. There's a book called Triggers and it talks about like someone cuts you off, right, while you're driving. Um, and you want to curse them off and get all angry and at the end of the day they cut you off because they are rushing to the hospital to get to their sick mom who might only have a few more breaths left right and you never know what other people are going through so controlling what you can control is a characteristic I learned from a pretty young age and um, I think you're only going to be given the toughest battles uh, 
and the people are only going to be given the toughest battles who can make it through to the other side and, and you know, kind of iron sharpens iron. Uh, right? Amen. Yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah, so um, that was from a young age something I had to live with and learn and, and be able to move forward from. And, you know, I, baseball was a, a game that kept Outlet. me connected to him. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Wow, dude. Well, thanks for thinking for sharing that. My goodness. I did not know I'd be hearing that today. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, it definitely shows with your character 100%. And obviously, the way that you carried yourself on the baseball field, like, thank you for the people that have definitely watched you. You know, I know from me and Zay's perspective, we enjoy and have enjoyed, you know, watching you guys do your thing on that field. It definitely makes our job a lot easier and more yeah. fun. So just, again, like, knowing these stories, like, bro, it, it makes my job so much more purposeful and actually makes me feel like I'm important doing what I do as well. So you guys yeah. are. You, you help tell our stories. And um, in a day and age where some people won't believe you unless there's video evidence, like, <laughs> we, we need that. Say it know? again. Say it one more time. Yeah, like, Say some, some time, people please. don't believe you unless there's video evidence to, to prove it. Like, you know, I might be able to say that I played for University of Tampa, but if there wasn't mm. the film crew or, you know, websites nowadays like you never know who's mm. lying like it's it's crazy you, you mm. it's so important <laughs> it's so important oh you got me thinking bro man i can't even talk about it right now it's nothing like super sad maybe the people maybe not know like the full story but i'll definitely say i've definitely have recently experienced exactly that it doesn't matter how completely right you may be about something if someone else may not believe it, understand it, or even want to understand it, that is what I struggled with last year. And it is very confusing because I know from my standpoint, I was doing everything I could possible just to simply be as truthful and honest. But now knowing that sometimes it doesn't even matter. Yep. It doesn't matter if you are honest, truthful, could be completely 100% correct that sometimes people will try to just say things about you, put stories, rumors, you know, and it may be a planned attack on your life. Weapons will definitely form, but my advice and my <laughs> my two cents is anything is possible with Christ and it won't prosper, but you just you just sent me into a camera. Yeah. I have evidence too, that's the craziest part. That's why you just, <laughs> I, have, I have all video, <laughs> Photo evidence of everything, even still. It's like, nah, it's like, all right. At that point, just walk away. Yeah. You're not gonna right. please everyone. Yeah. You know, be a good person. Hit, hit the pillow at night, knowing that you uh, are doing right mm -hmm. by yourself and and by other people, and that's all you can really do. Some people are gonna take it the wrong way, twist your words, but at the end of the day, like, you know, you are the only person. You look yourself in the mirror and know like what's right, what's wrong, what you did. Um, so yeah. Uh, crazy world, but, you know, evolving very fast. I don't know if you've seen like the Elon Musk robots or like the car, the self-driving cars. I'm up to date. I'm up to date. There's, um, you know, we'll be looking back at this video in 20 years, and you know, a robot might be cutting it and editing it. <laughs> like, like, I don't know. Who knows, man? Like, there's a lot of things that are evolving very quickly, but it, evolution is why life is so crazy and, and good. So, do you have any last remarks? All right, inspiration, motivation, you know, all that good jazz yeah. for upcoming baseball players. Because, like, inspiration is a huge thing. And even for upcoming baseball players and actually any male figures or men who may have lost their dad, haven't grown up without one, and just, like, how to kind of get through that, you know, yeah. emotional, mental aspect. The only tattoo I've ever considered getting, I haven't gotten it yet, was a quote my dad said to me and my sister and even my mom always growing up was there's no right and wrong decisions in life there's only consequences mm. right consequences being good or bad you might make the decision to go out with your friends on a Friday night right and go have 10 drinks and you're supposed to have practice Saturday morning right if we're talking about athletes relating this to athletes and then you show up and you're hungover and you play like shit like oh, yes. that was your decision Right, and the consequence was you woke up feeling like, sh like the garbage, and you didn't perform well, and now the coach is going to look at you in a different light. 
If you made the decision not to go out, you might have had the best practice of your life. You might have got the starting job that day, right, based on that practice. So there's no right and wrong decisions. You might have had a great time out with your friends. You made memories. You're never going to forget them. You met the love of your life. It's not a right or wrong decision. But the consequence was you went out the next morning and you, you played like garbage. So uh, just know that there are no right and wrong decisions. There, there's only consequences. That's actually cool. Right? That's big. But this is very cool. Thanks for having me. Hey, thank you. Thank you too for sharing like that. Yeah, that was cool. Mind blown. That was bro. cool. Cut it up. Cut.